Hey, this is Randy from Friday's Golf, and I'm joined by Scuba Steve, and we are out here at Beverly's Hills Golf Course. Now, for those of you who haven't been following the channel the last couple of years, this is a putting green that we installed at my parents' house and then built a golf course that all plays into this hole. You can check out my channel. I got loads of videos on it, but right now, this video is more of like an update of where we are now with the green, maybe some future plans, uh, what we had to do to build the green, and then maybe some things that we would have done different. So I think first and foremost, uh, we tell the people how we built it, because I think that's probably the most asked question is like, how difficult is it to build your own putting green? When you're building a green, what you wanna do is you wanna have plenty of light, you wanna have plenty of air movement over the top of it. So sunlight, air, and you want to have drainage. That's the other thing. You don't want water just sitting there because it can cause all kinds of disease problems. Too much water, if it just sits there, will actually cause mold. Looking back, it was a lot easier than we thought it would be, right? It wasn't that Probably much. the worst part was just cutting up the sod. We used a sod ripper and we ripped up this whole entire area that you see that is the actual putting surface. And then we rolled up the side and we moved it. Actually, we put it back here to kind of yes, build up that berm to, to eliminate some runoff. I don't think we needed to do that. I don't think you need to side rip up your yard to get your old grass out. I think you could just till that up, right? You could probably kill the yard. Kill it first. And then till it. And then maybe bring in some topsoil and kind of mix it You want it some topsoil with some sand in it. What do you think the ratio is? I would say 50-50. 50-50? Yeah. I don't know if I wish we'd have went more. I really do. I mean, it's a good foundation and it helps with drainage. It helps the drainage. And it helps the... The, the roots spread out a little bit easier. I think it gets water to the roots quicker too. I think it allows for less compaction. You don't compact the dirt and make it as hard with sand in there. But anyway, so first thing you wanna do is you wanna, you wanna work the soil up and then basically we just raked that, we put bent grass seed down and then we just rolled it and then we just watered the heck out of it for like a couple weeks. For a couple weeks. They kept it completely wet all the time. And then... And we put straw down to keep it, we keep did the put, moisture in. Yeah, we put straw down and what did you, what would you say, like 10 days later we had grass growing? Within 10 to 12 days, yeah, we had. We had... We had grass starting. We no, let it go we, for quite a while. I think a couple, probably a month. We mowed it really quick because we were anxious to get on it. But we took, we raked the straw off and then we had a really old school mower that was a greens mower, but it was really old school. And it actually worked okay. It did, it worked fine. It, but I think we went a little too early. We ripped up some grass and we didn't know if it would survive. And it ended up being all right. That first year we had no footage of the green. We didn't capture any video or any photos. I don't think you had your channel going then. I, I had it, we were just doing this on a whim. We didn't know if it would work or not. Right. We didn't even think to record it. It wasn't until the second year that you bought the Toro greens mower, right? And we didn't know what we were lacking in mowers until, until we, we got, got that, that one. Yes. Because that was a night and day difference. It actually made the green look better and it putted more I think it true. actually helped the green grow too because it cut it. It was more consistent. Consistent. And it wasn't yanking, you know, roots out of the, the green. But that Toro Greens mower was probably the turning point from where it went to like a... Just a... Backyard make, Yeah, backyard something. green into an actual pretty decent putting surface. Yes. And I think on that second year, we actually punched holes we yes, aerated we this aerated green. green and that was one of the best things we also did for the green as and far we'll, as the health of it and we'll be doing that this year there's a video on there once again it's well documented we 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 punched holes in the green pulled cores top dressed it sanded it and it really helped the green thicken up so the next thing that we did that second year because all we had was this putting surface is the course that i grew up playing on which we actually have a vlog on the channel uh it's called magic hills was the course and it got bulldozed. It's no longer a golf course. And I went we, out and actually talked to the owner and I said, what are you going to do with these greens? And he's like, we're going to plow them under. I'm like, can I have them? And he's like, have what you want. So we went out there with a sod ripper and we tore up the number one green, number green at completely. Magic Hills and we transplanted that out here. We took about two uh, lengths, which is about 18 inches of so, sod cut. Of sod. So two rows of 18 inches rolled it down and then we sanded all the, seams, all the seams and then watered the heck out of it once again. After we put in all the tea stations with the same way, we worked up the soil, we put down some topsoil sand mixture and then laid the sod on top of it. We sanded over the top of that, watered it heavily, but we had so much bent grass left over, we just put it over the hill and we're like, we'll just lay it over here and see if it survives the winter. We come back the next season, we look over the hill 
And to our surprise, not only was the fringe like growing better than the green was, but the grass over the hill that we just laid for extra sod, it survived the winter. So we went down, cut this up with our sod ripper. We ripped up the sod out here and then we actually rented that trencher the same day, didn't we? So what we did is we trenched all the way around the lower side, up around about halfway up. Yep. And then the only thing that runs off the field now yeah. runs into the tile and it out. Runs into, into the, the tile the and then it filters away from the green. So that really helped out the, the growth of the green. And then after we laid that tile down, we laid that new side. So now we have an apron. So here we are three years later. We went from a putting surface to a putting surface with a Fringe. fringe and tea boxes, bent grass tea boxes, and then we, this year we put drainage in and an, apron. and an apron on there. Next year, maybe later this year, we were thinking about uh, almost right where we're sitting, the sand trap, putting in a sand trap. Not sure what our method's going to be. We're going to make a video about it, obviously. So we'll have to do some planning, some thinking, and hopefully keep developing this golf course and keep you know maintaining it to the point where we're going to you know have something for years to come but that right there leads me into the next part which is maintenance because a lot of people when they put in a putting green they don't realize off the bat how much work it is to keep this thing alive and i can't speak to this as well as he can because i just come out and help with the heavy lifting i do like the top dressing when we pull cores i help mow when i come out but him and my mom come out here literally every day and you have to water it and you have to cut it every other day. Right now we're battling some, uh, what do you call them? Dollar silver, spots. Dollar spots on there. And it's from real hot temperature and you get some of that morning dew sitting on the green and it grows like a, like a, is, fungus. A, is like a fungus or a disease. And it gives you these little brown areas. There's other things that we have to worry about. There's some pests that get on the green, like worms and all Right now of, we've got a thing that's called cut worm. And then those worms and, uh, attract birds. All the birds come in, and those are under the surface, and they peck, peck holes, holes in the green. Like big holes, Like too. big holes, it yes. Jerks about and it. And I talked to a guy the other day, and there is a, a uh, chemical that you can put on the green that will kill those cutworms. So that's my next What What about the, what's the other purchase. chemical you use? You use Trimac? Trimac kills only the weeds on the green. It doesn't kill the green. What do you spray for the dollar spots? That's what that is. It's a fungicide. It's a fungicide? Oh, because yeah. we get mold growth on here. We used to get a lot of mold because of the poor drainage. It's not as that's bad. That's called silver moss. Silver moss. And what do you spray for that? Just that a fungicide? Quicksilver. Quicksilver. So the bottle about that big. And that's super expensive. And that's like $150. <laughs> oh, my God. Whenever you guys complain about the price of what it costs to play golf, if you don't understand how much the chemicals are, it's crazy. It's, it's unbelievable. But then you also, on top of that, when we're on the that vein of maintenance, uh, you also have your sharpening of your blades. That's crucial. To it's, do my mower, I think, is 135 bucks. And you do that twice a year? Once a year, hopefully. Hopefully once Last a year. Last year I did it twice. Well, we have two mowers. He has two mowers that are set to mow. One's set to mow the green height, and the other one mows the T-Station and the fringe. Here we are three years later, knowing what you have to put into it, knowing what... It requires of you each day would you have done it again in a heartbeat looking back on it I think that if you enjoy playing the game if you have the property and if you have the time that's the big thing is the time when you do retire fully I got like a year and a half and I'm done and, and then, then I can in the morning I can get up and knock the dew off I can water it should be watered in the morning it should be watered in the heat of the afternoon and it mm -hmm. should be hotter watered in the evening a lot of times I only get out here in the evening yeah Sometimes my wife will come home and hit it real lightly just to knock the heat off of yeah. it. And then I'll have to come home and finish it. It's kind of that satisfaction of like, it's almost like keeping a garden. Like if you go out and you plant vegetables and you yeah. tend to it, you get that reward. But instead of eating delicious vegetables, we get to play golf. Uh, exactly. But then you get the disappointment too when you start seeing the brown spots in the fringe. We kind of know why it's happening and we're gonna try a couple things to get rid of them. Yeah, there's a lot of work ahead of you. Yeah, there's a lot of maintenance and things that you have to keep up on and equipment that you do need to buy. And buy to... good, buy decent equipment. Don't buy some cheap 1940s mower. Yeah, we went the cheap route first and we found out very quickly that- yeah, That the, wasn't the way to get, go. Get the nice stuff and, and do it right, but it, it's doable. Two idiots can go out in their yard and make a putting green and make a halfway decent one. We had no experience. We didn't know what we were doing. But with the mowers and what we put in this green, maybe a thousand dollars. 
That's crazy. And the mower was 500. This green, believe it or not, is still in its infancy. Yeah, he told me 10 years before it's a mature green. Right now, I would say it looks pretty good, but it's, Every year it gets it, better. It does, every it just, single you year. You can see it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please thumbs up the video, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, we will do our best to answer those questions. And when I say we, I mean him. But please know that he is not a professional greenskeeper and he is just making up pretty much everything as he goes along. Exactly. <laughs> All I get my information from is a guy named Travis that works in Fort Wayne. Yeah, he's a he greenskeeper at the municipal clubs. courses. Anytime we have any issues, he usually tells us what we, knew, we need to do to remedy those. He's a little above my head on a lot yeah. of his stuff, but... <laughs> Hey, I listen to it. I try to absorb what I can. He knows like the breed of grass and we have we, we just know that it's green. Yeah, that's pretty that, much that, it. That's it. <laughs> so thank you guys as always. Hopefully stay tuned and see what we can do in the future with this green. But thanks as always for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Alright. Once again, there's did a Did we vlog. tile it before we did the... Do you hear me talking?